Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over my Steve Carlton player collection and I'm going to do it similar to uh, some of the videos I've done most recently. My Pete Rose collection where I'll show his cards individually and then do a tabletop recap. So starting off uh, from my newest to oldest here, I've got a, a 1988 Fleer Glossy. Finished up his career with the Twins, was a member of their 87 uh, World Championship team, even though he did not make the playoff roster and didn't participate in the World Series. Kind of moved around with a few teams there near the end of his career and uh, had a little bit of a stint with the Indians as well as a nice 87 Fleer Update Glossy. Now we're going to get to uh, primarily his Philadelphia Phillies years. A really nice 86 Fleer Mini with his uh, autograph on it. I, I was glad to get the autograph. I was looking for one. I probably would prefer it to be on a larger card, but uh, for the price I paid to get it under 20 bucks, I was thrilled to pick this up for that price and add it to the collection. Here's a, a nice Opeachy from 84. It's got the, uh, the French writing in there. So Carlton was a 10-time All-Star. Four-time Cy Young Award winner. Finished his career with uh, 329 wins, over 4,100 strikeouts. Uh, the thing is, he doesn't. Ha I, don't, I don't think he's as popular or as valued as he could be. And I think a big part of that was he kind of, um, he was very private. He didn't like to talk to the press. I mean, he wouldn't say anything to the press at all. Uh, reporter at 81 said, uh, the two best pictures in the National League at the time, uh, and neither of them speak English, referring to uh, Fernando Venezuela, who was from Mexico, and Steve Carlton. And Carlton had uh, some disagreements with the press uh, back in 73. In mid-70s, he decided, hey, I'm just not going to talk to him. And then uh, guys like Larry Boa, that it was a longtime teammate of his with the Phillies, said he wished that uh, the public could see the, the Steve Carlton that he knew from the clubhouse because he was kind of a mystery to the outside world because of his... Uh, his boycott of the press, but just a tremendous uh, pitcher. The numbers don't lie. He really was dominant in the uh, the 70s and 80s. Most of these uh, 80, 80s junk wax era cards I picked up very cheap. We're talking, you know, just a few dollars here or there. Definitely not the cost of grading. And I think those days are kind of over uh, where you can pick up those cards at prices. <clears throat> Have uh, steadily climbed and climbed as they should for these some of these graded cards here. This is a uh, 81 top sticker coming in a pack of 81 tops, really sharp. Met nine on that. Kellogg's did a cool 3D shot in 81 as well. Here's a classic case of a card that I paid. Uh, I paid 99 cents for this, I think, back in 2011. And the, you could do it back then. You could uh, be a minimum bid and win something like this. Nowadays, that's just not going to happen. I think this would probably go for well over $10. Uh, but a really sharp 79 Steve Carlton. Nice centering on that. Great action shot of him. There's some really good action shots of him coming up in the uh, the mid-70s. And then it goes more to a uh, to a portrait shot. Uh, early in his career, as you'll see. Here's a nice leader's card here he shared with Jim Palmer. Uh, check out my Jim Palmer uh, collection. I just did a video on a couple days ago as well. A really sharp 78. I love, I mean, this may be the best near mintimate 8 that I've got in my collection. This thing is dead centered. It's flawless. This card is perfect. Who knows why it's not uh, graded higher, but man, I just love it. It's a beautiful card, and I paid just a few dollars for it. Moving on to 77 here. Like that image of him there. And then I've got the uh, the sticker variation as well. See that textured material. 2011 Tops Lineage did these stickers. I like it. They paid homage. So here's the back. Way different than the than the other back. No stats. Now we're seeing some of the really cool imagery there from the mid-70s that I was talking about. A great shot of him in action from my one of my favorite sets, the 76 tops. 
Then, of course, is 75, another great action shot of him. Don't have the mini on 75, just a regular. And then looking at 74, this is going to be, uh, this would be his first action shot pose of him that Tops would use. His Kellogg's from 73. A leader's card in 72, or from the 72 season. See what, the man, look at that. Him and uh, Louis Tiant both had ERAs under two. This was probably Carlton's best year. And then he did so well this year in 73. That's when he started butting heads with the press and uh, feeling like he was being mistreated. And then he eventually shut down and just refused to talk to them at all. But a really cool 73 card. Now we're getting into more of the portraits of him. So here's his last card in a Cardinals uniform. He didn't play for the Cardinals in 72. He was traded in February of 72 to the Phillies, obviously. And uh, I don't know what the Cardinals were thinking, but, you know, Bob Gibson was at the tail end of his career, and it would have made sense that uh, Carlton would have taken over for him. He was a 21, a 20 game winner in 71, so he wasn't exactly a scrub. But they decided to get rid of him and... Um, Philadelphia definitely benefit from him. Really sharp uh, 72 traded. This is a high number there, 751, so it's a little bit uh, short printed. On the back, it talks about him being traded for uh, Rick Wise. Yeah, how'd that work out for you? The Dale team stamp. Now, you'll see a lot of similarities in these next few cards. The 71, uh, kind of a, a leaned-over portrait there. Uh, very sharp for 71, uh, not bad shape. A little off-center left to right, but overall pretty clean card. Really tough uh, corners and edges on those 71s. Then in 1970, very similar pose there. Steve Carlton looks a little bit older there. Then this next card in 69, he's still got that boyish look to him. Similar pose again, once almost like 70 or 69, 70, and 71, almost the same exact pose of him. Then in 68, this is a little different image here. I like this one as well. He looks good in a Cardinals uniform. I, it's a shame. I know uh, some of you Philly fans here don't, don't mind, but... Uh, <laughs> Could you imagine what it would have been for the Cardinals if they still had him on the roster all that time? And then uh, some of his oldest cards here, his, last, his first two cards here start at the 67. Looking really young there. And then he didn't have a card in 66. I think he only pitched 25 innings, and so he didn't get enough innings to, uh, to have. Or excuse me, 25 innings, yeah, so he didn't get enough time. So he didn't have a card in 66. And then uh, 65 is his rookie card. He shares it with Fritz Ackley. Really sharp card. Wanted this card as a kid a lot. And now time for the tabletop recap. And here is the tabletop recap. Now, Carlton had uh, two cards in uh, Mike Payne's 300 great cards of the 20th century, starting with his uh, 65 tops rookie right there. And then also his 72 traded. But the question is, uh, he also had a teammate in Miami in high school that also made the list, had a card in the 300 great cards of the 20th century. And uh, he wasn't a Hall of Famer, a guy by the name of Kurt Bavacqua. He was a, I think he might have been a freshman when uh, Steve was a senior there in high school in Miami. And he went on to be famous because he was the uh, 1975 Garajola Bazooka bubblegum blowing champion. So he's the... Uh, the winner that's immortalized in that 76 um, Bubblegum Champion card. I love that card, by the way, but uh, just an interesting note. Then wrapping up to the 80s, you see a lot of similarities in the, those late 80s cards, mid late 80s. And that's it. Once again, everybody, I appreciate your posts, your comments, and I'll talk to you again soon.